सर प्लीज थैंक यू डॉक्टर चित्रा एंड डॉक्टर भरत एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर संजय डॉक्टर नीता एंड आईडेक टीम फॉर इनवाइटिंग अस हियर फॉर दिस इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन सो डॉक्टर भरत हैज ऑलरेडी स्पोकन अबाउट लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट गाइडलाइंस नाउ दिस एएसी गाइडलाइंस आर द लेटेस्ट वन व्हिच वर रिलीज्ड रिसेंटली आई विल हैव फोर फाइव स्लाइड्स ऑन दैट एंड देन मे बी वी कैन डिस्कस बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव एनी गाइडलाइंस फॉर इंडिया देयर आर नो इंडिया स्पेसिफिक गाइडलाइंस एज ऑफ नाउ फॉर एनएफएलडी मैनेजमेंट मे बी वी नीड टू प्रिपेयर दोस बट before that let me go through the uh, aac guidelines so in this we'll uh, just cover about the management algorithm for patients of nafld uh, cirrhosis prevention and management of weight diabetes hypertension and dyslipidemia so as uh, dr bharat and dr chitra uh, discussed earlier the patients who are at high risk of uh, nafld are the ones who are having either pre diabetes or diabetes having obesity and or other Uh, the cardio uh, cardio metabolic risk factors so in those patients if you see that there is a stetosis or if the astlt is increased then these patients uh, need to be uh, first stratified uh, based on the risk for uh, cirrhosis and uh, simultaneously we also need to manage their uh, risk of cardiovascular disease so the management involves management of obesity diabetes hypertension and dyslipidemia and that might differ a little in different risk categories so we'll have four five slides on that now so this was already covered by dr bharat based on the fib score which is very easy and we can do it on the uh, internet by using the calculator we just need to put the three four parameters and you get a risk score of the patient so the patient can be at low risk of cirrhosis he might be at high risk or might be intermediate risk so based on that uh, uh, for management of weight the general lifestyle changes remain the same irrespective of the risk uh, score we need to advise them the healthy diet low carb diet uh, avoid the simple uh, sugars uh, high fiber diet patient should be advised for regular exercise aerobic as well as training exercise and then sorry i can't see it clearly here okay alcohol intake uh, should be minimized in patients who are at low risk or intermediate risk the patients who are at high risk they should better avoid the alcohol and for weight loss uh, uh, in addition to the behavioral therapy we don't have many drugs in india we just have all stats so that can be used the patients who are at high risk and who are very obese these those patients can be referred for bariatric surgery now for management of diabetes in these patients again uh, the general guidelines for diet and exercise remain same and uh, the drugs should be choosed based on the uh, ada algorithm uh, depending on the other comorbidities that the patient have so you can go for metformin as the first drug and then you can add either glp1 or agil2 inhibitor based on the other comorbidities that the patient have but the patients who are at high risk in those patients maybe we need to be careful while using some drugs like sulfonylureas okay regarding hypertension management again the uh, targets remain same for most of the patients irrespective of their uh, risk uh, category we need to target the systole of less than 130 and diastole less than 80 as and arbs are the drug of choice just in patients who are at high risk we might need to you know uh, de uh, de that depends on the decomposition of the liver of the patient otherwise uh, the guidelines remain same as arbs and then ccbs beta blockers for uh, management of lipids you need to stratify the patient based on the cv risk so if the cv risk is high then uh, the ldl goal of 100 uh, is there if the patient is at a very high risk of uh, cv then the ldl goal is uh, still lower that is less than 70 and in the patients who are at extremely high risk, uh, risk of uh, cv events the ldl goal is 55 so now having so many guidelines it would definitely be confusing for us so why do we require uh, require all these guidelines because we need to have some uniform you know uh, management strategies for patients but uh, uh, then uh, these guidelines are not followed very often because most of the patients are not seen by the specialist they are seen by the gps and then uh, what guidelines should you choose because there are so many guidelines and they are all Uh, having some very vari variations and sometimes even the guidelines are contradictory so the quality of the process that is followed while making the guidelines should be considered we should look for the trustworthiness of the guidelines and any conflict of interest uh, should be avoided then uh, we need to have the uh, the guidelines should be locally applicable so as of now <coughs> yes, we don't have any india specific guidelines because we don't have much of data from india uh, so what i will do is that i will just uh, so so these guidelines we can either so we can either accept the guidelines we can <coughs> reject the guidelines or we can adapt the guidelines to suit our own requirements 
So these are the different guidelines uh, that Bharat has covered in his presentation. Now most of the things are remain same. Now about the, the diagnostic criteria, what is easier for us, uh, which can be done even in our primary clinics is that uh, we can do imaging. Use, uh, ultrasound, most of the patients come to us with the report of ultrasound and then ALTST can be easily done. So imaging can be used for diagnosis. We should rule out the other causes uh, of uh, NFLD, uh, other causes of fatty liver and then alcohol consumption, there are different limits. So 20 grams and 30 grams are the common limits which are assessed by most of the guidelines, 34 females and 24 females. Now for screening, uh, again as Bharat has covered, there are different uh, scores. So the, sorry. Yeah, so population screening is a big no. We don't need to screen everybody for NFLD, but the patients who are at high risk, the patients who are diabetic, obese, and having other multiple risk factors should be screened. And for screening, the easiest thing is to go for USG and liver enzymes that we can do. And if uh, based on the um, risk, if you find that the patient is at high risk, then maybe you can go for elastography. Then ELF blood test is the one which is recommended by NICE, and that's a simple blood test. Uh, but uh, it's not easily available in most of the places, and it's very costly. I mean, in India, I think it costs around 5,000 rupees, so if you can afford that, you can go for that also. Okay. Yeah, so these are the different formulas for FIPS score. FIPS score is the one which is most popular, and the another one is NFLD fibrosis score. Uh, that also has some simple parameters, and you can just put the values in the calculator, and you will get this score. Now, regarding the lifestyle interventions, again, the, uh, you know, for us, uh, the, the guidelines remain the same, that we should restrict the calories by around 500 to 1,000 calories. We should attempt to you know, get a weight loss of around 5 to 10 percent. And then physical activity should be recommended, aerobic as well as resistance training for most of the patients. Diet should be low to moderate in fat and low to moderate in carbohydrates. Regarding pharmacological treatment, again, there are no drugs which are actually approved for the treatment of NFLD. Vitamin E has got some role. Pyogatazone can be used. Other drugs uh, that we use for diabetes, like metformin, GLP-1 receptor agonist, HGL-2 inhibitor, out of these, I think GLP-1 receptor agonist have some evidence to support its role in prevention or in uh, you know, prevention of the progression of NFLD. HGL-2 inhibitors do have some, uh, some uh, studies, but then still these are not approved for the treatment of uh, NFLD. So I'll stop here, and I'll invite Dr. Chitra to summarize, and maybe then we can discuss it. Thank you.